Claudia Tenney, the Assemblywoman, is uh, in with us this morning. And uh, where are you at with your Christmas shopping there, Claudia? <laughs> you did pretty well this morning. Yeah, so. thanks for the hats. <laughs> Got the gag that. gifts out of the way. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple more things I need to get. I have uh, nieces and nephews that are, I don't know, they're hard to buy stuff for. They're, they're those teenage years. And I hate to just go to Best Buy and buy them something there. I want to get them something meaningful. Yeah, but sometimes that... I can't really get them Donald Trump hats. You know? Get them a hoverboard. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a problem those are right now, huh? With all the explosions and fires being caused They'll, all over the place. They won't ask Aunt Claudia for anything next oh, year. You get them God. the hoverboards. You know, it's funny because my nieces, every I always I take them to get their nails done and all that kind of stuff. I never did that when I was a kid. Yeah. Of course, we never had all these nail salons. But sure. I used to ride horses, so I was used to having... I, I never had any of the anything. Mm -hmm. like my hands were dirty. I buy a couple like ponies. Horses, had riding clothes on all the time. <laughs> you still do that? Still well, ride? I tr if I can, I, I try to ride it. I, it's uh, it's hard. It's time consuming and very expensive. Yeah, it must be as you're on the uh, campaign trail mm -hmm. again, throwing yeah. your your hat in the ring in an endorsement yesterday by a group that endorsed you in 2014 right. uh, when you ran for this congressional seat. What is that like? What does that feel? And what does that mean to you to get yeah, this endorsement? Yeah, it was well. I got endorsed yesterday by Citizens United. Yep. And uh, it's a their conservative group out of Washington. That's pretty much a mover and shaker in the in the conservative Republican circles, and it's a big boost for me. And I'm hoping that more will will come on early to uh, give me a boost as we go through to the the rest of the campaign. So far, I'm the only announced candidate in this race. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of. I mean, I know what Dave Gordon's doing an exploratory committee, but I'm waiting to see if if Richard Hanna runs or if who else is coming out. People are are coming in and out. You know, putting their toe in and out, seeing which way the wind blows sure. and whether it's, you know, well, good for them. Jay asked uh, I'm yeah, in, Mr. You know? Hanna last yeah. time he yeah. was on the phone with us. So you asked him the question. Yeah, he didn't I, really answer he it. He didn't, but the sentiment that he gave was the idea that he, you know, he would be back and maybe this was his calling or his, his seat, um, you know, to, to run again. But I believe he said March would be, you know, around the time that he would make an announcement if he was. Going and Mr. Yeah, Brindisi as well. Yeah. I don't know. Mr. Brindisi has been. Did he say? Well, he said he was running, and then he said he wasn't running. Mm. Maybe or he'll wait and see. I think he's weighing his ideas to weigh some family issues, as we all know, uh, with the assembly seats that both of uh, you hold. The opportunity to travel back and forth from Albany to home is is you know the the plus a nice thing um, with the congressional seat you are you are out of town more often and you are away from family and uh, wait can't you just get a deal like Paul Ryan gets sure. where apparently he only has to be in Washington a couple of days a week oh, there yeah, and gets to right. live in Wisconsin as the speaker of the house I well, thought that was an interesting deal oddly enough I could probably be the only person in the state assembly to say this if I were to move to Congress I would actually cut the distance of my assembly exactly Exactly. Yeah, half right. In that's the true. Congressional district. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's not very. I mean, for a, the 134,000 people in my assembly district, which starts in New Hartford and ends in Orange County, mm -hmm. the, the uh, congressional district's about half the length of that, with over 700 and, what 717,000 people in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible. So yeah. to me, it would actually save me a little money because. People don't know that in the assembly, when you're in your district, when I'm driving up and down the thruway and going to Orange County, Delaware County, Elster County, Sullivan County, all those places, I pay for all that mileage. That's all on me. It's not covered by the state. I'm not reimbursed for it. So You got the pass, by the way, for uh, the thruway? Yeah. <laughs> you need a bicycle. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's, uh, it gets – right now it's great with the cost of, of gasoline and fuel down mm. low, but I'll tell you, it can be extremely expensive, especially in a campaign year. I'm spending $1,000 a month on gas out of my own pocket, and that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you do to pass the time, by the way? Uh, well, I'm in the car. Hands-free on the phone. Now, <laughs> I know. Don't say satellite radio. No, now, come on. <laughs> talk radio. I know she listens to talk radio. Yeah. I do have satellite, and, and uh, I do listen I listen to radio a lot. Mm -hmm. I listen to books on tape. Mm -hmm. uh, I do listen to, to, and I'll tell you why. I mean, I do, when I can get a station, I do, but yeah. when I'm driving to Delaware County and some of these places... You can't get, and there's no yeah, coverage. I'm joking, actually. You know, driving I, I, through some yeah, areas, I, I you can, you got to find mm. read these remote little stations mm. that are that are operating because it really is. If you've ever seen the district, it's there's really it takes four hours if you drive to stay to try to stay in the district to get right. from one end to the other, mm -hmm. and if you take the throughway and go down through Albany that way, it takes three hours and twenty minutes. So, but but anyway, um, yeah. So the congressional district is a lot a lot smaller. Uh, really excited about running. It, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work, but it's uh, it's 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 an honor to run for any position. But you know, I I really even though I lost in 2014, it was really an honor to to be in that race, and it was exciting. It was interesting. I met great people, and and the same with the assembly. I mean, I, 
there's there's the assembly is frustrating, but you know it is every time I go in that chamber, you know I just say, wow, this is this is big. This is a beautiful place. It's an honor to serve the people that I represent, and and uh, I feel the same way about running for Congress. It's it's really a, it's really a big deal. But anyway, back to that. One of the good things that's happening in the assembly. And the Senate is that we're finally kind of cracking down on corruption. Yeah, you have uh, mentioned some reforms and you've listed some ideas in which you have. And this is really in regards, I, you know, I think you reacting to, uh, you know, what we have saw here with Shelley Silver and Dean Skelos and the fact that, you know, these gentlemen will receive pensions still. And right. I, I know you've come up with some ideas. Yeah, last, so, so when Silver, of course, we've been coming up with reforms since the day I got there mm -hmm. and a lot of ideas, a lot of initiatives. This year we, and I mentioned this last semester, we voted on reforms for the state assembly. Most of these reforms were already passed in the state Senate. Right. So they were all soundly rejected by everyone in the assembly, every member except for Mickey Kearns from Buffalo. But some of these things are just common sense. They're rules changes, but there's also some changes we could make uh, regarding uh, you know, term limits. I know a lot of people like that idea. Um, I have a bill for term limits that would limit legislators to five terms, which is 10 years. Uh, I also have a bill that would strip anyone who is convicted of a, a corruption felony, like a felony involving, uh, you know, moral issues, moral turpitude. I hate to, you know, people hate that word, but that's a legal word. Uh, so morally corrupt, using, you know, the, your job, you know, the corruption involving your job, you would forfeit your pension. And that would be, to me, a great deterrent to anyone who's getting involved in politics. Say, hey, you know what, if I get involved in this corruption schemes, I'm going to lose my pension. Uh, another another reform that I have, and it's another bill, would actually take politicians out of the defined benefit pension plan. No other public employees would be included in this. It would just be elected politicians. So that would also keep them from wanting to stay in and, and get their high threes mm -hmm. and log time, and then they would actually be there for the right reasons. Eliminate some of that rhetoric, I guess. Yeah, and that would help. Uh, you know, there's just so, a lot of the reimbursement. I think one of the things that, that people don't understand also is so the governor, the state leaders, all have slush funds. They have these taxpayer-funded accounts that are really non-denominational. I want to know what's in those. Mm -hmm. What are you spending the money on? And where is this going? And how is that constitutional? I want to, I want to put some sunshine on those and, uh, in, and ultimately find out what's in them and find out whether they're spending appropriately using our taxpayer money. That's how we got Vito Lopez. It was discovered that Shelley Silver used that slush fund to make a secret payoff to, um, you know, for sexual harassment victims of Vita Lopez. So that's the kind of stuff we have to get at at Albany. We need to be open and transparent. And uh, these are just common sense initiatives. There's nothing earth shattering about any of them. They're done in other sure. states. Yeah. It's just New York. I, I think it's common them. sense, specifically being convicted of, and we, we are of a the, crime. We are considered the most dysfunctional legislature in the United States. And just enacting some of these, I think, would make just a, a, a huge steps initially. Most people polled, by the way, agree with you about uh, public officials yeah. not being able to gather their pensions should they be penalized for something. Uh, they polled New Yorkers corruption. and people. Felonies mm -hmm. and corruption mm -hmm. involving corruption. I, you know, I, people have said, oh, you, you know, what if somebody has a DWI or they whatever. That's that's not a crime involving, uh, you know, your moral, your moral fiber or mm -hmm. ethics. I'm not that, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, but right. it's also, you know, somebody may have a chronic habit. I'm thinking, uh, yeah. sticking similar with that point, and uh, I mentioned this before, on the Senate side, uh, I, I believe over the past few days that uh, Jeff Klein, again, has come out Ugh. with the ideas, and uh, you've brought this up before, of maybe getting away from outside income from elected officials. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to talk about his gun ban. No, no, no. <laughs> and and we had him on, and I talked to Dave about this. You know, he kind of touted himself of, of you know, uh, his involvement with the Safe Act bill said, "Not upstate, buddy. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. you know, don't uh, don't try that." But his idea of uh, you know pushing for the for the reforms of the outside income by some of these elected officials. I know you had an idea. Yeah, uh, I've on that actually it, from the beginning. I picked up a bill. It was it was by a prior colleague of mine, and now I'm co-sponsoring with a couple of other colleagues. And it does the opposite of that. It it cuts legislators' pay in half. Sure. And it cuts session time in half. There was a time when when we were in session where it ended once the budget was passed. That was the end of it. Mm -hmm. In Texas, you know, they meet every other year. Right. So, so we really need all these career politicians that are getting reimbursed for when they go to Albany, we do get reimbursed, not in our districts, but when we go to Albany for session, to come all the way down there. We did not vote on a bill until February last year. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we came down every week for session, passed a resolution. Good month around, and a half. Nothing. And so why are we, we – and then we passed sometimes 400 bills on the last day of session. 
If we can do four hundred right. do- bills on the last day, why can't we do it all in three months? Right. So your idea is to take right. away that money that's being used from taxpayers to pay these politicians right. and allow them to have some outside. Yeah. So the outside income. I want people to come in to this field who are from diver- diverse backgrounds. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a lawyer, a business owner. I have a veterinarian, a, an airline pilot, a former cop, a corrections officer. We have people from all walks of life. I mean, that kind of gives them the, the status. Those are the people that right. bring us experience. Sure. That we need to make the decisions that we have to make. We have school teachers. I'm trying to think. It's really a diverse group of people. But a lot of people complain that they're stuck there for six months and, you're, and you waste a lot of time. Let's cut that down. Let's make a truly Jeffersonian citizen legislature and have them come in with term limits. They come in, they make good decisions, and they leave. You don't want them coming in and making decisions that I've got to prolong my career. And, that's, right. and Jeff Klein, what Jeff Klein's saying is give us a raise mm-hmm. so we can increase our pension and we can stay there. And the special interest, now I'm doubling down on my on my inability, or my, the ability of the taxpayers to replace somebody. It sets them up as a career yeah, politician. so now you're there forever. You mm-hmm. can't get rid of them because the, the pay is high and the allure to stay there to get the high pay and the pension, you'll never get rid of them. Let me, whenever you create a new bureaucrat, you never cut them down in government. And, and that I, takes and them you, out of the private you're sector. You're turning them into bureaucrats instead of citizen legislators and thinkers, and that's what I would rather, I'd rather you know, go on that side of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to one of the things I was, wanted to say about the guns too, and there's a, this issue with Jeff Klein. He just came out with a, a new package to, to say that anyone on the no-fly no fly list yes. is going to be denied a gun. Now, you remember that this no-fly list isn't what it sounds like. If you do a one-way flight, say, you could be thrown on the no-fly list, and it's almost impossible to get off it. So I, I do not support any more restriction of, of Second Amendment rights. Uh, the, the, some of the strictest gun laws in the nation are in California, and Barbara Boxer, the senator there, came out and bragged about how strict their gun laws were. Didn't stop the crime mm-hmm. in San Bernardino, and not one of those people were on the no-fly list, the murderers in, in San Bernardino.